Good day guys, Bing here. Um, today we're going to model um, this. So actually, um, I tried to model this this um, this roof, but I found it um, quite hard. Uh, I couldn't figure out an easy way to do it. So probably I'll just leave it uh, for now. So I'll probably come back to this one once I figure out. Okay, so now today uh, we're going to model this one. So this is this one's quite uh, straightforward. So you will see it's they are these are just a hexagon panel with different size uh, void. So uh, previously we did a exercise. So this is so this one day three ten. So we created this pattern to uh, create a, a perfect uh, hexagon pattern. And the reason why we do this is if we so I'll just quickly show you. So if we I'll quickly do a conceptual mass. So if I do a divided surface, okay. So and then change this to a hexagon pattern. So even if I change this one to same size. And you will notice this is a it's not a perfect hexagon. So see this edge, a different different length. Okay, so so um, and let me just go back to that. Uh, so we can copy. Let me just copy this one. Uh, download this one. Oh, actually this one. Yep, download this one, and open this one. So you can you can just download this one to have a look and so if you tab select one of of this family edit and you will see this is how we make it perfect hexagon. So if 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 you want to know how you can just go have a oh, sorry wrong one just have a look of this video day three ten. Okay so now. Uh, Okay, so today we just we're going to model this so with a little bit thickness and also a void. So the thickness very simple. Select this face, drag this up. So then you can just type in a number. So for example, two hundred. So this will be two hundred uh, millimeter thick. And then the next step is we need to create a void. So First, let me just uh, HH to hide this solid to place that circle void. So we need to find this, uh, the midpoint. So place place a point, uh, draw, draw on face, and pick the midpoint here and the midpoint here. And then select these two, create a spline, make it reference line. Then place another point, draw on face, and midpoint. So now this will be the center, center point of that circle. So now we can create a reference circle, draw on word plan, set word plan, pick the horizontal, so tab, so this one, and then create a circle and create a radius parameter. So let's select this radius and create a, let's call it R instance and OK. And um, so we are going to create uh, another parameter to control this uh, because I we don't want to uh, use the radius to control because um, the size of this hexagon changes. So depending on the the grid of so if I go back to this family, so depending on the grid of this because of this setting, so you can be big, can be small, but what. I want to do is I want to use a, a percentage, a number, a number between zero to, to one to control this radius. Okay, so now let's have a look. So this one, if I drag this one to here, so it looks like a uh, one meter. So this will be maximum. But uh, of course, you need some edge. You you, you can't just have maximum. So this void touch another void, you, your your um your model will break. 
right? So probably just reduce this a little bit, make it roughly 900, so you have a little edge there. Um, okay, so looks like we need to find the relationship between, I guess, between this. So this is the x is actually the, the, the dimension of the grids. Okay, so now let's go to family type. So we can create a new pra a parameter. So we can call it, um, what do we call it? Percentage. Percentage. Okay, so let's just call it PCT. And change this to number. So type of parameter to number. Instance. And okay, so this percentage will be between 0 to one so i'll just type in 0 0.5 for now now we we can go back to this radius so we we need a formula for this so what i'm thinking is i'm going to use this so pct percentage times part time the maximum grid so which uh which is x here and then also i want because i uh I want it to be slightly smaller than this one number, so I'll just type in 0 point, maybe 95, something like that. So if I click apply, so this is the currently 50%. Okay, so at 50%, so radius is 475. At 100%, it will be this. So we still have a little, you know, um, structure. Okay, there. So I think this is good and click OK. So now we just need to create this void. Select this circle and create a void. So pick the, the one on the left. So maybe let's ch uh, type HR. Looks like a uh, wrong direction. So let's just change this one. So this I will type in 200 to match the solid. And for this one, I'll type in zero. Now, if I click here, yeah, all good. Okay, so now we can load this into that and overwrite. Okay, so that's it. So this is the the panels. And also, if you tab select individual one, you can go down here. So this percentage, so for example, I'll type in 0 0.1 it become very small, right? 0 0.5, and then you can manually adjust them. Um, actually, I'll just quickly, because uh, it will take a long time to manually adjust them. Maybe we can do this. Uh, maybe we can try Dynamo. So let's, let's quickly do it. So go Manage Dynamo. So I'm going to use uh, uh, use some line to to uh, I'll just I'll, I'll just do it. Okay, so let's first create a new. So in this in this uh, go to floor plan. Oh, we need to draw a line. So maybe let me just go to 3D view. I'll see if I can draw a line straight on this face. Okay, so uh, go to create a reference or model. I'll just use model line. I'll see I can, if I can set work plan onto this face. It looks like we can. So I'll just set work plan onto this and then I'll draw a, so something like this. Okay, so this Okay, so this is a model line. And what I want to do is, okay, so here, uh, I'm going to first select all these elements, all these uh, families. So I'll so change this to menu for now. So go to Revit selection and family types. So I think family type, oh, not this one. Oh, we, we need this one still, but family types here. So find this family file, link this, and then run. So you will have a list of these. And then 
I want to know that the location of these families. So I'll just search location. Uh, I think um, um, which one? <laughs> Get location, maybe this one. Get an existing elements location. Let's try this one. Elements run. Yes. So although it's a little bit off of the but uh, roughly right so yeah I think it's all good and then we need to select this element okay so uh, this time I'll just go back to Revit selection uh, which one selection and this time select element element uh, which where is it here select model element and click on select select and pick this just pick this model line okay so now we can do the just copy this so control c control v and link this to this so run so now we have this location the location of the this uh, model line and then we need to create a um let me think distance I think we need to a distance let's try to this distance this one so distance two so this will get give us the distance between two elements so I'll link this and link this and run and we will have a list of so you will see all these different um, different uh, distance right and then we need to remap so because these are uh, 7 meter, 6 meter, 8 meter, 3 meter, but what we need is we need a, a number between 0 and 1. So we can apply that number to the percentage parameter. So, okay, so remap. So let's type uh, remap. Um, which one? This one, this one, I think it should be this one. Oh, where is it? <laughs> Sorry. Remap. This one, yeah. Minimum, maximum input value. So I think minimum um, number to be mapped. Minimum, minimum value of input range. Uh, let's try zero. Okay, uh, one, and then just link this to this, and see. Let's see what happen. What happens? Run. Ah, looks like no. No, not this one. Ah, hang on. Let me try this one. <laughs> okay, number new. Yeah. Okay, I think this one should be right. So link this to this, and new minimum will be zero, and new maximum will be one. And link this, link this, and run. So let's have a look again. Yes. So now you will see the number uh, will be between uh, zero to between zero and one. Okay, so maximum one. Now we can apply set so we need a list of elements so we have it here and then we are going to use set parameter by name okay so link this element to this element parameter name is uh, pct i think so double click quote pct and link this to this and the value from this to this and if I click run and just need to wait for a few seconds come on
almost almost there <laughs> one three yes okay so it looks like okay um uh, uh, it, it looks like the it's opposite so the, in in this uh image you will see in the middle that bigger void but a smaller void uh on the edge but this one looks like the where close to this model line that's all very small and then okay so what we can do we can swap them of course so you can just here so just swap this one minimum minimum can be one and the maximum can be zero so let's if i click run again and so we just need to wait um, a few more seconds okay so and also uh, you can have different you can you can have different uh, shape of uh, model lines you can even do circles or rectangles you can um, yeah any shape So this is it. So let me just uh, minimize this one. So yeah, and also once you at this um, stage, you can you can still tab. So for example, you can still manually tab, select them, and if you want to, you can just go down here. So this one, you can just type in a number to change them if you want to. Okay, and that's it. If if you have any question, please let me know. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.